Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So first things first today, because somebody totally finally called me out about it um, in the comments. Yes, I am aware my Christmas decorations are still up. Yes, it is literally only in this room that they are still up. The reason being, uh, this is kind of like my studio. It's away from the rest of the apartment. I haven't had a chance to go to my storage unit um, and put all my Christmas decorations away, so they're in like a box. <laughs> Here, but I just didn't want to take them down and then just have more clutter in the studio when I can just leave them up um, So hopefully I can make it out to my storage unit soon But I live in Manhattan and my storage unit is all the way in Brooklyn and I don't have a car So getting to my storage unit is Typically a bit of a trek, so I promise it will come down very very soon But yes, that is why the little gingerbread and my little like holly and tinsel are still up just because I have not had time <laughs> to deal with all of that and a very chaotic December uh, holiday season and then I'm finally getting back to normal after traveling so <laughs> I apologize for that but yes I'm aware that it is still up. <laughs> um, anyway I'm gonna be doing a book review today we're gonna be talking about Catrion Awards sort of latest release Little Eve but before I get into that I want to talk about a giveaway that I will be doing. Like all of my giveaways it will be done through my Instagram at Violet Prin. Um, and I talked about doing this uh, a couple weeks ago, but I'm going to be giving away my top read of 2022, which was Gone to See the River Man by Christopher Triana. This is a brand new copy that I recently purchased. Very excited for that. I think giveaways are really, really fun um, because I love exposing people to books that I really like and enjoy. Um, and who doesn't love a free book? And then on top of that, it will also be coming with this used copy of the Wordsworth Classics, Madame Crowell's Ghost and Other Stories by Sheridan Le Fanu and edited by M.R. James. Uh, this did come in a recent Abominable Book Club box that I got, but I already own this. Um, so I wanted to include this kind of cool, creepy, gothic short story collection, along with a couple little extra goodies that I have. So I've got some stickers, one that says Shirley Jackson in like black metal, little crystal moon, some other cool things, and then this pin from Abra Cadaver, which is uh, Bride of Frankenstein having a little spa day. So I just have these. These are things that are all brand new um, that I'm not ever going to really use. I have so many stickers and pins that I get, um, so I try now to collect them and then hoard them for giveaways. So I will have information for that going up on um, Instagram probably on Thursday. My Thursday video will talk more about the giveaway, but just so that is on your radar. Again, that will all be hosted through my Instagram at Violet Print. My giveaways are really simple. Follow my account, like the photo, tag a friend, probably answer some fun spooky question about the horror genre. Um, and that is that. Anyways, Let's get into the real point of this video, which is to talk about Little Eve by Catriona Ward. Now, I believe I had this book on my also most anticipated list of 2022. I say also because I did two, one at the beginning of the year and one in like June, and this had been announced. Um, and when I spoke about this, I remember being like, I think it's kind of weird when authors um, release books back to back to back in like the same year. Um, it always makes me pause because realistically, I don't think there's that many authors that could turn out two books in a year. Um, so I was a little hesitant about that um, because I knew Sundial was coming out as well. That being said, I had really enjoyed The Last House on Needless Street. It didn't blow me away like some people did. I did figure out the twist, but it got me excited to read Sundial, which I loved. I loved Sundial. That was a five-star read for me. I read it in like four days, less than that probably. Um, and I adored it. I was so thrilled with that. So I really thought I was going to love Little Eve because it, to me, it just seemed like Catriona Award's writing was getting better and tighter and the twists were starting to blindside me. And then I picked this book up and I read about why this book came out so closely after The Last House on Needless Street and Catriona Award. It was like three books within like a year period, right? Um, Little Eve was actually, I believe, like, the first novel, it might have been the second, um, that Catriona Award ever wrote, and it was only published in the UK, I believe in, like, 2018. It won the Shirley Jackson Award. Shirley Jackson. Um, it won the Shirley Jackson Award, um, but it didn't actually sell well. And then with the success of The Last House on Needless Street, um, Tor Nightfire did decide to 
publish this to an American audience as well. So it got a wide release. Um, and this is where the problems come in. This book reads like a debut novel from somebody who hasn't found their footing. Um, and going into that and knowing that um, definitely helped me understand that I probably wasn't going to like it as much as The Last House on Needless Street and Sundial. However, I didn't expect it to be quite as confusing and all over the place as it was. So I'm going to read the inside flat before I really dissect this novel, okay? So it says, On the wind-battered isle of Altnahara, off the west coast of Scotland, a clan prepares to bring about the end of the world and its imminent rebirth. The adder is coming, and one of their number will inherit its powers. They all want the honor, but young Eve is willing to do anything for the distinction. A reckoning beyond Eve's imagination begins when Chief Inspector Black arrives to investigate a brutal murder and their sacred ceremony goes terribly wrong. And soon, all the secrets of Altnahara will be uncovered. That sounds pretty promising. Um, I don't think I realized how, um, uh, like, historical this was going to be. I don't even know if historical is the right word, but it's set in, like, um, the early 1900s. And, and yet, for some reason, it feels like it's kind of set in, like, the 1800s. Like, it was really hard to understand the time period. And there, there's parts of the story that take place in, like, 1917 with World War One going on. There's parts that take place in the 40s. And, and maybe it's because this is, like, an isolated group of people um, living alone on an isle off the coast of rural Scotland that made them just feel so out of time for the time that it was set, but it was just difficult and confusing to understand the time period and setting for me. Um, this, at the end of the day, is a story about a cult. Um, it is told in kind of vague terms that you really read between the lines on. There's a lot of characters and a lot of situations that you have to read between the lines for, and when you read between those lines, this is pretty much a story about abuse and a lot of it in a lot of intricate and horrific ways um, towards a lot of children, primarily young girls. And so it's a very disturbing subject matter told in a very, very vague way. Um, we are introduced to an unreliable narrator kind of right off the bat. The writing style is strange because it seems to be switching from perspectives of two different people and every now and then you get another person's perspective thrown in. However, those perspectives are told in the third person, but sometimes they're in the chapters that are supposed to be by the first person perspective. It's all very weird. There's a lot of time jumping going on. It's all very, very difficult uh, to kind of follow the motions of things. A lot of very, very pivotal, disturbing scenes are kind of breezed over in like one passing sentence. Like there's a character who dies pretty violently. Um, and it took me like going back and rereading the page like three times to be like, oh, she just died. Like the way it happened was so vague that I was just kind of like, like, I, I feel like this is a main character. This is, they're coming to their end. This huge secret has just been revealed about them. And it's just brushed over. And I kind of felt like that was just the overall tone of everything, is that there was an interesting, albeit highly disturbing story in this book told in the vaguest terms possible. Um, the, the use of the unreliable narrator was not helpful at all because all it did was make everything about ten times more confusing. Um... A lot of characters, especially Nora, um, they don't seem to follow the character development that was set up for them. I had a really difficult time with Nora because she seemed to be being pulled by two separate forces at once and kind of seemed to have these two separate personalities. And her whole story, as that developed, confused me more and more and more and more, especially when you get to the big reveal about Nora. Her reactions to certain things, such as her reactions with Mary, which if you've read the book you'll understand, don't make sense to me in the grand scheme of things when you compare that reaction to everything else that has happened to her and how she responds in the end um, to all of those things. 
so I just found this book, this kind of jumbled mess. I, I felt like I was navigating a fog trying to read it. The only thing that was interesting to me in the entire novel was Inspector Black and the way Inspector Black unraveled everything that was going on. Um, I found Eve to be an insanely unlikable character. She was intriguing to read about, but I don't know if I necessarily fully enjoyed reading about her, just because also very similar to Nora, she kind of had these like polarizing concepts and ideas and would really go back and forth in her personality. It's very difficult to tell if she's a good character or a bad character. Um, and it's not because it's like Tony Soprano where it's gray, it's she will literally do something horrible and then like two pages later do something really great and just didn't feel like one solid complete person. Um, and that's got nothing to do with the fact that she's consistently like molding her identity and like trying to like chameleon through different situations. It just her at her core didn't feel like a fully fleshed out character. Um, I felt like so much more could have been done with the cult. I felt like it was interesting in its cliches. Um, it's very Jonestown-y, uh, but much, much smaller. Um, but there was just so... so much wrong with the way the cult was presented to the reader. Um, it just, again, it felt very, it was so hard to try and understand what was going on. Um, and I just felt like it wasn't necessarily like implications. Like I don't feel like I was missing key things that I should have been reading more into. I just feel like they weren't presented in a way in which I would have made that conclusion as the reader for a lot of things. And then later it does get kind of spelled out for you, but you're like, I don't know how I was ever supposed to connect the dots myself like there's never like a way to do so so this kind of twist that comes out of this book doesn't feel like a blindsided twist because it made sense um in the way that the last house on needless street did which i thought was brilliant it just kind of feels like well i would never have seen that coming in any way shape or form so like okay right kind of thing um there's a lot of poorly done misdirection based entirely on our unreliable narrator, which again was done so well in The Last House on Needless Street and so poorly in this book that I can see the groundwork for how Catriona Ward was able to elevate herself to write something like The Last House on Needless Street, um, but this book did not carry it. That being said, I was able to read it. I didn't hate this book in any means. Um, I thought it was interesting to see, again, the groundwork laid to get Catriona Ward to where she is as an author today. It's like reading Rage by Stephen King or The Long Walk. You can see how he got to where he is today through those novels, even though I don't necessarily think they're brilliant. Um, so this was a three-star read for me. If you're a Catriona Ward fan, like you're really a fan, check it out. If not, I think this is one that you don't necessarily need to read because I do think that The Last House on Needless Street is her breakthrough novel for a reason and then the things that come afterwards are going to just build upon the the style and um, maturity that her writing has from Needless Street onwards. Um, you know, Sundial was much better than Needless Street and I thoroughly uh, enjoyed them both, whereas this one was just very clumsy and all over the place. Another thing that really bothered me is she writes in the uh, foreword of this novel how important the Scottish setting was to her and how important like Scottish culture was to her because she is of Scottish descent. Um, and I was really excited to read something because I had just been to Scotland, like very focused on Scotland. This cult pretty much could have been in any rural town in like the 1900s or at least anywhere in the UK um, or Europe for that matter. Like it's just a, a random abandoned castle. Um, I think that, like, Little Eve might be a Scottish legend. Uh, I'm actually gonna Google that right now, but it's not like they ever really go into it to make me understand that that's what it was. Um, and no, as far as I can tell through Google, it, it's, it's not. The History of Hogmanay, what is this? I don't know. I don't seem to find anything. If you know any Scottish folklore about a Little Eve, please tell me. And if you've read the book, also let me know if it connects any way, shape, or form to this novel. Because um, this was just, it was strange. 
super gothic atmosphere with like with what an attempt at like a gothic prose I think was done here but I think Katrina Reward needs to just write as if she's in this century um because this was just this vague jumbled muddy mess and while at the root of it there was sort of an interesting story there I just didn't feel invested or care enough at all to pursue it um it was so like I had no reason to care about any of these characters the cult wasn't interesting to me because it was so difficult to understand and it was just so horrible and there's this one character Abel who I actually think is the most tragic character in the whole thing because there's this moment that he has where he's like I think I'm gonna leave the cult and it comes out of nowhere it comes out of absolutely nowhere there's no build-up or character development for that at all in fact it's kind of building up towards the opposite and he's like I think I'm gonna leave I think I'm gonna go figure out what the hell is going on um and then his like cult sisters are like no don't how about you don't how about you don't and he's like okay and then that like doubting Thomas part of him just immediately disappears and then he just has an absolutely devastating fate and I just kept waiting for him to like have this reemergence of the questioning and the doubting of the cult uh, especially because his being there doesn't make sense and when you read the book it makes even more sense that it doesn't make sense for him to be there and that that plot just went nowhere and I was really invested in that and that character because I thought he was intriguing um, even though his character development was all over the place um, but it just didn't go anywhere and I felt like that was just how most of this book was it teases you with one concept blindsides you with a, a totally different outcome that doesn't actually come out of anywhere and then is like haha did I get you let me twist it again with absolutely no reasoning rooted in the plot for these characters to act this way um, and it was just kind of a jumbled mess uh, but I didn't hate it I didn't hate it I didn't like it I didn't hate it I can't give it a two-star review because I did read the whole thing in just a couple days short it's like 270 um, pages so I, I don't know if you're interested it's great to see the groundwork of where Katrina Ward's writing um, grew from but other than that that's kind of the merit that it has so yeah three stars a solid just middle of the line three star read it was what it was um anyways thank you guys so much for watching as always i post every monday and thursday sometimes on saturdays and if you enjoy these videos please hit the like and subscribe buttons down below and we'll catch you all in the next one Mwah.